Hello everyone, and welcome to the Deeply Renegade podcast. My name is Molly, also known as the Deeply Renegade, and I'd like to welcome you guys to episode 369. Today is Saturday, May 15th, 2021, and I'm glad you could join me today. Um, have to laugh a little bit because it took so long to troubleshoot more than what was going on with my computer. <laughs> but hey ho, um, would it be? I know I had hinted last week that maybe I wasn't going to record, but managed to make it work, so no big deal there. Um, we'll see about next week. Hey! Um, so what's the story here? Yeah, for some reason, like, the USB ports are fritzing on my computer, and so this will probably warrant further study and investigation because, um, would it be? I'm down to one, and that seems a little risky. Because <laughs> um, if I'm to safely ferret all of the stuff on my computer off, I still need that one. And I can't tell if this is because my webcam is screwing it up or something else weird is happening. Um, so, that is the story there. Hopefully it won't be too crazy. Um, but it took so long to figure out what's going on. I drank my coffee. <laughs> so hopefully I can get everything worked out because I don't feel like this computer should be this, <clears throat> excuse me, this broken at this point. I don't know. I can't remember how long I've had it. Maybe it has been as long as this computer is willing to go, but that would be a little bit disappointing. Um, yeah, like, can't tell if it's real or not, the, the short, but it thinks it's shorted, so. Who knows, or maybe weirdo things are happening, I don't even know. Um, so, <sighs> we'll make it work eventually. So, what I am working on right now is my hinterland sweater, which is a Jen Steingast pattern that I am knitting out of my hand spun. So the warm tones are a nest slip kit from Nest Fiber Studio that I spun to look like um, spin cycle tied in the wool. And the blue is Three Waters Farm Fin. Um, however, I don't know what the nest slip, the fiber content of the nest slips were, but the blue is Fin from Three Waters Farm that I ended up doing one ply um, spun as the braid came, and then two plies of um, the braid mixed up as bats. So this results in a soft blue with very subtle stripiness, um, which I think is lovely. Um, so definitely the case where would it be? I feel like I have plenty of fiber. I can make this as long as I feel like um, what would it be? And now it's the case where I'm beginning to investigate a little bit into how much more I want to go. Um, so I did try it on probably Thursday. I mean, yeah, probably Thursday. Um, and then just sort of like held up the sweater, held up where it was sitting on me, tried to figure out if I needed to knit that full amount or not, um, would it be? So if I'm aiming for like my typical t-shirt length, um, I'm guessing the 11 will be fine, but this means that I have um, probably another solid week or two of knitting based on the current pace. <laughs> before I can do something different. Um, I opted not to add bus shaping to it, which is fine. It made it easy. It made it very easy um, in the dark knitting. Um, we are currently watching Kiki Blinders. Um, after the, the failure of watching Dark Crystal together, that was apparently um, <laughs> the wrong level for the Dear Sweet Level 1. <laughs> Um, so 
that has been our our evening viewing and the dear sweet level one likes uh watching it in dark in bed um so i sit and knit and having an in the dark project is the perfect way to make that happen because i don't like to be laying down while watching shows that is not my jam so definitely come like a pretty decent way since last week so it'd be the case where like last week i finally started working on the body after being in the sleeve so now we've got more body knit which is cool um and i can bring this in a little bit closer so i've probably done like an inch or two oh more than an inch or two it was curling it's curling so I have my previous marker in and probably have knit about as much as that. So my previous marker was one and three quarters inches. Where I am right now is closer to three, two and three quarters. So I knit an extra inch than I did like the previous week. So what I will do now is increment the marker. to the next location and continue on my day. So if that is the case, yeah, I know. So it'd be the case for roughly speaking on five inches from sleeve separation. There's gonna be another five or six inches to go before um, I put on ribbing. And that will be very exciting because then I will be done using my three millimeter needles and I can put it in a different project. Not too crazy. Um, and that isn't because I'm going to be, um, what would it be, working on two sweaters simultaneously. That is definitely not my way. <laughs> or what would it be? I figure that my, my knitting superpower is focus. <laughs> um, with focus, lots of wonderful things can happen. Um. And I am a-okay with that. Um, so, what would it be? The problem with this project is that it is exceedingly boring right now. <laughs> um, so it requires very specific entertainment. Um, and I don't know if, what would it be, all of my groups are or like all of my knitting groups are hitting the wall at this point. But this is boring enough that like I can't I can't take it to midnight because it is not engaging enough with, with the conversation. <laughs> or would it be? I think so many of us are tired right now that it's just like oh um what would it be? The Friday night group is still pretty perky, but what would it be? There was competitive book buying. <laughs> um, would it be so? You can't you can't predict these things, but I do know what would it be like. A lot of us are feeling tired. A lot of us are. What would it be not having too many exciting things happening in life right now? So I totally get it. It's what would it be like? It's been a long slog and it's not over yet. Um, but this project is pretty decent podcast knitting because I have to constantly think about what I'm going to say to you guys. <laughs> so like, what would it be? So, so when we think about like project rotation, it was like when I'm going to work on this or this or this. Um, would it be? I think there's like a couple of different guardrails that I have going on right now. So like this stock in it and the round project, um, like I need to be very distracted. <laughs> I need like 95% of my attention to be on something different than not knitting stock in that. Um, so that means like 
shows with subtitles, um, thrilling shows, knitting in the dark, um, what would it be? We, we did end up finishing Shadow and Bone, which is why we ended up starting a new, a new series. Um, so it's just a case where, what would it be? But it needs to be very engaging. Um, I am not the sort of person where um, I only take boring projects to, to midnight. Like, that's, that's not my way. I, I was knitting in the dimly light bar while drinking with my knitted lace, um, or would it be, with like my even star. So with beads, with lace, with the whole bit. So um, when it comes to knitting in groups, there there isn't a situation in which I can't take the hardest project I've done to it. Um, or would it be, or it be the case where even if the first row of the project is like the hardest project that I've ever done, I ramp up on the learning curve and then I'm good and I can take it out in social situations. Um, but like a project like this is like perfect for like waiting in line or carrying on a conversation or that sort of thing. Um, just sort of depends on the magnitude. Um, so would it be? But it would be the case where this probably hasn't gotten as much love because it's, would it be like, I spend a decent amount of time uh, knitting in front of a computer on Zoom right now. So would it be if the conversation is not exciting enough, then I, I need to change. But luckily, because it is an in-the-round project, I can pick it up and put it down at will, and we're good, right? Um, I did get this back onto the yarn caddy. You can see it's actually visibly depleted um, in terms of yarn, but yeah, I'm going to have plenty of yarn. The only reason why I have the other balls still in my bag at this point is because I will do the ribbing kind off in my like spin cycle yarn. And I have needles in here I don't even need, so whatever. Um, and I'm just throwing this caddy in the bag and call it good. <laughs> As you do. So, when would I take out my brioche project? I took out my brioche project um, at midnight. Because it was a little bit more engaging. Like right now, I'm doing like color changes. And so that is exciting. It's exciting to get to the end of the row and change colors. So. There's all sorts of fun going on there. What is maybe harder to see right now is that I do have a couple of stripes in of the red. So as you do, but I'm, I'm taking this guy out when I need to be a little bit more engaged, but it is still not right now. <laughs> Both of my projects are very exciting, <laughs> but this is more exciting than talking it around. So. This is What the Fade, Andrea Mowry. I'm off pattern now because I'm continuing to fade and do brioche. And one side is cool and one side is warm. So on the warm side, I have firecracker, orange tabby, and patisserie. And I'm fading in firecracker again. And then on the blue side, I have ice skating party, naive watercolor, and blue rinse. Let's see if I can't over but I'm really actually you can sort of see on the camera it's actually a, an incredibly smooth fade um between them so the blue rinse and ice skating party are sort of more neighborly than the ice skating party and naive watercolor were so um what would it be so you end up getting like hints of the background in here um so I can't even see <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I probably need to weigh, probably need to sit down and figure out if there's anything I need to do yarn management wise to figure out if I need to have smaller blocks between fades. Um, if I'm in danger of using up all of the yarn beforehand, so try to make it look intentional like. I don't know. 
So um, this is all Stranded Dye Works. Um, would it be uh, Merino Singles? Lovely to work with. Very lovely shawl yarn. Very soft and cuddly and schlankety. And this all just hangs out in this bag, which has a bunch of San Francisco landmarks on it including one that you've probably seen in pictures on Instagram. <laughs> um, and I can probably capture the other ones without too much effort. It's probably, or would it be, that might be a fun alternative bike ride mission with the Dear Sweet Love Bowl one. Um, because where we have been going, where we ultimately go biking is or whatever. Well, actually, we do pass. We pass this guy. Oh, it's hard to see. This one is little. So we pass this guy on our bike rides. And I have found that picture with the windmill. So those are both in Golden Gate Park, which is something that we go through in order to get to the Golden Gate Bridge. But not too crazy there. Um, would it be? The patisserie does not fade nicely um, because it is such a big value difference from the orange tabby and the firecracker, but it does look good on the right side of the show, so I don't really care. It may be a little stark with the finish and it's wrapped around, but um, the patisserie does pick up the colors. Um, it's just so far off in value that whatever. So this is what I have been gravitating to, like on knit nights and that sort of thing, because it's a little bit more engaging. There's the fun of striping. Um, would it be? There's an awful lot of knitting that needs to happen on this for it to count for stash dash. So I'm trying to front load as much of that as possible. But the final sort of choice that's going on is then like spinning. So with spinning, or would it be spinning is engaging enough for like Zoom at night. Um, and then spinning can handle a whole bunch of entertainment. I can't do or I can't do spinning in bed. <laughs> so having that boring project means whatever. That's my in the bed in the dark project. <laughs> um but I've managed to do a whole bunch of spinning this week. So I showed somewhat last week. I I showed some of it last week because I finally got unblocked on some projects. And now I am working on my second to last spin the bin. Um, but would it be, would it be the case where spinning is entertaining enough and it sort of needs the right amount of attention paid to it? So because I'm trying to not put too much twist in this, I'm watching it more carefully. And so because it is a long wool, it doesn't need as much twist. So my normal way of doing it isn't, yeah. And I don't necessarily want it to be super duper horrifyingly fine. So there is that as well. Um, I would it be like this is probably like a finger and weight two ply, so I'm probably going to get like a score weight chain ply at the end of this. Um, but I needed to watch it carefully. I needed to be more in the zone in my spinning. Um, because what would it be? Because if I just move the way my hands want to move, it will become super duper horrifyingly fine. And I didn't. I didn't want that. So um, I've been like listening to music while working on this or being on a call while working on this because that gives me, would it be? So it'd be the case where, would it be? That's more like 50%, right? <laughs> I'm only 50% distracted from what I'm working on. <laughs> um, so what I did here was I had my four ounces of Leicester long wool bats that I made at the made during my um, shave them to save them class with Glamis and Glamis. And then I had four ounces of Dorset horn from Cheryl, who is the 1764 shepherdess. 
And so I ended up doing a YouTube live last week on the making of some of the bats and basically like how I was splitting the fiber and sort of fact checking everything. Um, and now I have, I've already got four ounces of this spun. I'm already into the second ounce of the remaining four ounces. So I've come like a really long way. And what ended up happening was the bats were, there's quite the sheen going on there. How close can I get it? Okay. Yeah, light's really odd considering, ooh, there we go. Just had to fill it right. So what's going on here? The Leicester model was gray, the dorsal horn was, had like sky blue, some navy blue and some and like splotches of like a brilliant sapphire and so what i ended up doing was taking that braid splitting it um hamburger style into eight sections took my bats split them hot dog style into eight sections um which then meant that i had half an ounce of blue and half an ounce of gray combine those together on the drum card to make a bunch of one ounce bats pulled it off as sliver, um, and what I ended up doing afterwards was I just sort of grouped the sliver. Because I pulled it hamburger style, the blue hamburger style, that meant that there were sections that had more of one color than another, so I just sort of visually sorted them into a light blue to dark blue gradient that I'm spinning. So that's why I'm planning on chain flying, because then I will have this long color chain gradient yarn. Um, and there will, like, I don't think my color transitions are going to be totally um, smooth because sort of the edges of each one of my bats had a little bit more gray in them or the edges of my sliver, so the beginning's a bit more gray and the end's a bit more gray. So there might end up being visual markers of when I switch from one to another. I hadn't thought of that entirely because what I was doing was I was simultaneously pulling chunks from both um, both fiber supplies and inserting it in, and the blue just didn't take up as much area. It wasn't quite as fluffy. So I'm hoping to get something that feels pretty good, um, would it be, but it's definitely much more rustic than my normal spins. Um, so the dorsal horn felt pretty rustic, but in comparison to the Leicester long wool, it's <laughs> when I'm spinning, when, when I'm in blue sections, it definitely feels way, way softer. <laughs> Which is why I wanted to make sure that I didn't over twist it because that was going to accentuate wiriness if I wasn't careful. So I have two more here in the plastic bag and these guys are my darkest ones. Do, do, do. Just like came out the light is so strange today. <laughs> um, but this is sort of more of the lighter blue, so there is a decent difference between them. The other thing that happened was I did end up finishing um, the darker color for my fog. Chew. A lot of glow going on here. Probably needed to put up the shower curtain for some reason, but oh well. So, um, what would be? So there will be decent contrast. It just sort of depends on what you're seeing. Um, what would it be? The impression is maybe a little bit more brown than gray, but whatever. Um, so I have two of these white and two of these gray. And what I'm going to end up doing is four plying them, but I'm not going to four ply them until it is time for, or what it be, I won't be four plying them until it's time for the um, stash dash, which starts the 28th of May. So there is that. Um, see, I have this bin of stuff. Isn't it exciting? I'm pretty sure in this bin of stuff I have my samples. Surely I have a tape measure. <laughs> I thought I put my samples in here. But now I'm not seeing them. 
So the other thing that I did was I balled up my um, pink and orange um, Florida Cracker and colored top spin in preparation for further shenanigans. Ooh, I have two tape measures in here. This is so exciting. But whatever. So after doing the samples, I concluded that um, So I'm like gathering everything that I want for stash dash. So it'd be the case where I'm spinning only singles, but I'm not applying them. And depending on how I'm planning on applying them, I'm like changing up how I am. So depending on how I'm planning them, planning to apply them, I'm changing up how I'm preparing them for that. So it'd be the case where I want to make a four ply. All I have are two bobbins, which means I need a pair of center pole balls in order to make the yarn I want. Um, what would it be? And I'll have two ounces of white and two ounces of gray for a total of four ounces, um, as you do. Um, so because I'm also planning on doing a four ply of my um, fruit salad spin, basically, what will end up happening is that I have two plies on bobbins for the green, but I only had a single bobbin for the warm tones of that, so the orange and magenta pinky one. So I needed a center full ball of the orange pinky one in order to create four total flies. So makes sense, not too crazy. Um, it is possible that if I want to reclaim more bobbins, I will need to um, I will need to maybe wind other stuff off, but it'll be the case where I just take from one and not the other. Um, or would it be take from one end instead of taking from both ends? So well, it just sort of depends on how I'm feeling and what's going on. I don't think I am capable of filling all of those bobbins. <laughs> in like the next two-ish weeks, so or would it be? So in a little bit less than two weeks, it will start. I will have a happy plying palooza. I will get both go yardage for all of the spinning that I've done in the spinning that I haven't finished in the last month. We'll call it good. But I do feel pretty confident that I will be able to finish, or I do feel pretty confident that I will be able to finish my Leicester long wool. Um, I'm calling that project blue steel. <laughs> Is what would it be? It's a very, it's a very dirty blue now. Um, so blue steel project. Um, I feel pretty confident I'll finish up the singles on that pretty soon because it has just gone whoosh. Um, and then what would it be the final thing that I did in preparation for stash dash? And I suppose there's one more thing that I could do too, but I haven't sat down and done that. Was I spent a lot of time this week ripping back the boxy. So what's going on here? I'm going to have to figure out where that marker ended up floating away to. So what's going on here was that um, I didn't do the high-low hem in the best way. So what I've done is I've ripped back to where I started the short rows. Um, and then what I'm going to do is knit forward an inch and a half and then start the short rows. So I did like an inch and a half to two inches um, of knitting after I finished the short rows, and that sort of accentuated the bagginess that ended up happening. Um, and so what's going to end up happening is I will be doing um, shrinking short rows instead of growing short rows. And so that bag that was created by the growing short rows um, was like a big enough distortion in the fabric that um, what would it be like 
it, it just didn't really look good. So what I have here is how much knitting I've undone. So it's a pretty sizable haul. So what if you, there's, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm guessing there, there's a pretty decent amount of yarn in there. I didn't run across a join in my black, which is um, Shibui um, Silk Cloud, which is their mohair silk blend. But I have run into um, one join in my gray, which is for the ribbing sections of this, um, as well as um, a join in the blue as well. So, but I basically just wound this into a ball, and as soon as I run out of the blue, then I will launch into knitting the ribbing, and life will be good. May, maybe with um, a little bit of recovery, if it turns out that it's in an awkward place and I'm not on the right side row. But what that's going to mean is that, or what that's going to mean, at least for me, is that... Um, would it be the I won't be knitting over my short rows and that should make a much smoother transition and then I will hide that transition by transit or by being at ribbing instead so should be good it will be sort of more similar to like a sock heel um where you don't need to wrap your shirt or uh like heel flap and gusset style short row um, which ends up making just a way smoother transition in the end. So that's my thought process there. Um, what would it be? I guess the other thing with that is that you end up uh, decreasing in order to hide that as well. So whatever. We'll, we'll make it work. Um, but I'm assuming it's going to end up looking way cleaner. And if not, then at the very least, I'll be sort of at a point where I can figure out what I want to do to recover from that situation. Um, but it was an awful lot of knitting worked out. It took a it took a really long time to find my my end, um, and then it was pretty painful ripping off the bind off because you I did it in a two together style bind off. So there was an awful lot of places for the mohair silk to overlap with itself um, to make it a little bit more painful and then it was less painful to rip out the ribbing and then it was a-okay to rip out the stocking and it just took a long time <laughs> um but it was probably good that it got increasingly better as i went instead of increasingly worse so there is that um so yes it sucked but it wasn't unmanageable. It wasn't, I'm never going to be able to get this out because I remember from this project that like, it wasn't terrible to rip out. It wasn't impossible. It wasn't like I was ripping, ripping things to make it come apart. It was just the case where I kept like a little circular nearby to basically free the fluff. So it wasn't the case where I was ripping the fluff out. It was more the case where I was just um, figuring out if there was like a bend and sort of um, would it be lifting it free from itself? So we still have full fuzz. Um, no fuzz was harmed in the creation of this. And then the other thing that I ended up doing was there were a couple of places where there had been like fuzz that had it glommed together and created like these basically knots of fuzz. And I was able to just tease that apart and remove basically this little fuzz ball that had ended up on the um, mohair silk. So it's soft and kidney and lovely and it will be a joy to work with. Um, but first I need to, but first I need to get this to the, I need to free up my three millimeter needles so that I can resume, um, or get this resume knitting in the round for a while. Um, so this is my next sweater partially. Um, but because this is yarn held doubled, um, and I'm going to get count the full, the full amount of it, I am excited. This is the perfect stash net project. The project I haven't prepped up that probably could, 
Um, I'll have to do some digging and looking up. Hopefully I took decent notes on it. Um, is um, I noticed that um, the bind off edge on my fingerless mitts is raggedy and ripped apart. So what I need to do is um, find out which ones are raggedy, um, put it on, and the, these are in the fingers of the mitts. So I need to find out what parts are raggedy, rip them back, put attach new yarn. Um, I still have the original skein of yarn from that project. I haven't used it up in my scrap destruction. Um, and get that back into a good place. So those will be a really easy fix for Stash Dash as well. Um, what I don't have with me, and I think still requires some debate and thought, is, so I was looking into, um, how to fix, um, would it be? I have two projects that are knit out of Magnolia Dark and for some reason they were extra bonus delicious and took a lot of heat from what would it be from silverfish um and so i thought i had a fairly reasonable repair on one of them but both of them have a lot um what would it be at least more than three um maybe five on the sweater so then it's a case of like what what exactly do i want to do with it um so i don't think anything has gotten worse since leaving texas but so i'm trying to figure out what i want to do if i want to repair it because it's like a whole lot of yarn like i have like would it be like i have a walk on the moon kit in one of them and so, so I'm not entirely sure how I want to approach that and what I want to do exactly. Because like sometimes I look at it and I'm like, oh, this is my big deal, I'll fix it. And then other times I'm like, oh, what did I do? And it probably also doesn't help that, would it be, like Magnolia Dark is a gorgeous color. It's just, would it be, sort of a... Uh, um would it be like that magenta color with maybe some extra drama or some extra black drama in there <laughs> so it's like what do i want to do how how do i want to approach this so um i haven't decided yet um but i don't think the repairs that are needed for that would count for stash dash anyways, so it's really just making up my mind on how I want to approach it. The other thing is because it is such tightly applied merino, um, I'm not sure about like the frish the friction aspect of it, and because it is a very light fabric, I don't know. This might just be the case where I end up ripping them both, um and deciding to do something different with the yarn entirely. Um, and it will probably live in timeout for a very long time because <laughs> <sighs> man. So I don't know. I'm not entirely sure what I want to do about that. But such is life. Whatever. It's sort of like wearing this sweater, for example. So it's definitely the case where would it be this sweater? Um, would it be is like might be it might be the wrong size right now. So then it's a question of like what would it be like for the most part. I'm fine with it. It has massive pockets. So then it's the case where it's like you think about where I would need to rip back to change that choice it's so it would be ripping the whole thing and that just doesn't appeal to me at all right now <laughs> that does not sound like a good time um and then the craziness because um there there would be extra craziness 
because um, I ended up doing like random number generator to make these sleeves. So <sighs> would it be? I'm sure the law of averages would say it would turn out okay, but you know, that was like partially in order to break up color transitions or make it look similar to the body because it is a combo spin random sweater. I'm not I'm not gonna act on it right now. It it will take me a long time to act upon it, but I feel like this sweater and my breathing space, uh, which are both very well on my pig patterns, ended up I feel like I selected the wrong size for me in hindsight. Or maybe I selected a size that would give me positive ease and I don't feel as comfortable in positive ease stuff. So <sighs> Those are things going on in my mind. But the fix to that is here at the cast on for both of those, right? <laughs> wow. So what would it be? Like my hinterland definitely has a lot of positive ease, but it has like a very lovely shoulder fit because it is a yoke, um, a circular yoke. So there's that. Um, would it be? And I suppose you could probably argue, I don't know, or this would be maybe something to think about um, when we're talking about like raglan shaping versus um, circular yoke shaping. Like you can totally change out the top of a sweater, right? Um, if it's not, if it's not working for you. Um, or would it be? You could totally change out the top of the sweater um, if you like one versus the other. So there might be just something right now about me falling out of love with raglans and wanting different things than raglans. Um, but it'd be the case for, say, for example, you like the rest of the sweater with its awesome huge pockets. You're like, well, I can do whatever I want with this part and just incorporate that other bit elsewhere. So, what is a line? Like, it's it's supposed to be this way, but maybe if the shoulder fit was better, I would be more excited about it. Or maybe I'd be more excited about it if it was more blue instead of more orange. And that is my own mistake for throwing a whole orange braid into the combo spin, because it ended up dominating visually. So, just things floating around in my mind. Um, the challenges were finally released for the Fun Onion um, Tour de Fleece. So, would it be there? There were a couple of different challenges. Um, would it be? And as I'm beginning to think about what happens after I finish my bin, um, would it be? I'll have to figure out how I want to do a challenge. Like one of them is um, finishing a Tour de Fleece whip. Not not anything like not relevant to me. Um, <laughs> Um, another one is doing a project that is um, related to a place you'd like to visit. Because we're beginning to get into that mode again. Um, another one is actually doing like a straight up sweater spin. This wouldn't be finished in, in the time frame, but would it be definitely a case where there's plenty of fiber to put together like a combo spin again? Probably I would end up doing a pound instead of 20 ounces because 20 ounces at my default weight is a lot of sweater. <laughs> um, I'm probably going to get away with close to um, 12 ounces in my hinterland, for example. So there's that. Um, and then there isn't actually any knitting components. I'm trying to think of the other challenges that were going on. There were like five. I've only named three. Um, I only remember the one I can't do and the two I'm thinking about. <laughs> so I haven't quite gotten to the point where I can figure out what it is that I want to do, but we're beginning to think about what comes after spin the bin is over and like what sort of spinning intentions I want to have. Um, certainly room in the stash for like a big combo spin. Um, not sure if I have room in 
the yard stash for the major sweater closet, but. going to be an awful lot of knitting excitement as I'm sort of rejiggering my plants, so that's exciting. Um, would it be? Hopefully I can figure out the mystery of my computer. Um, very much so excited to be over with my COVID-19 vaccination, so I still have to wait another week before I count as fully vaccinated, but it will be very excited to very exciting to be in that place. Um, so not too crazy there. Um, making plans to be out in the world again. Um, would it be probably going to end up being in office more frequently in the coming weeks? So it'd be nice if it didn't have to be in my waiting to reach full immunity time, but. Oh, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whatever. Things are moving more slowly than <laughs> than my preference, but such is life. Um, so that's that's the story here. Um, but hopefully I ended up sort of giving a good perspective on how I am shifting attention on projects based on how distracted I am. <laughs> it's like the magnitude or how good of a distraction I can create in order to happily craft. Because um, right now in my life, I do not have a project which takes all of my mind um, and they're probably like it would need to be very very intense for it to do that so some or would it be something to or whatever something to keep in mind um, yeah and then would it be some chatter about having my last fiber optic braid actually be um like a replacement for my favorite head ever we'll, we'll see we'll see how i end up breaking on that one um i do i do love um would it be a good gradient though so i am looking forward to finally getting to start my ink to powder gradient um so i'll probably end up showing that next week because it will be started so with that, I hope you guys have a lovely week and I look forward to talking to you guys again soon. So take care guys. Bye-bye.